Thank you, everybody. My name is Leo Lorenzo, and I'm a wireless uh, solutions uh, engineer here in Cisco, and with me it's Eric. Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Eric Knudsen. I am the technology strategy and solutions lead for Cisco Crisis Response. Thank you, Eric. So tell us a little bit about this truck. Well, uh, I'll tell you that this truck is just one tool in the overall toolbox that we have in crisis response. And we're here in the Purpose Pavilion, and you might be surprised, but one of the technology teams at Cisco actually reports up through um, Fran Katsudis, right, our chief people officer. Uh, so this is a representation of kind of the commitment Cisco has uh, to communities and helping customers, partners, and any organization really uh, with communications uh, after they sustain some sort of a disaster, maybe a natural disaster, even a man-made disaster. Um, so this is the NERV, the Network Emergency Response Vehicle, the 2.0 version. Uh, so this is replacing the older NERVs that we had. They're really big black trucks, right? Very difficult to keep cool. They had a conference room inside of them. This is the newer, lighter, faster, leaner, but ah. more muscular, I think, nerve. Uh, and I can take you inside Please. if you'd like. Yeah, yeah let's take a look at well, it. Okay. If you right. have a look inside, you can pan to the right, and you can see on the screens we've got the automation environment, uh, and the state of charge for all the batteries right over here. Uh, of course, we have some uh, video regarding uh, Talos and the global cybersecurity uh, activity. In the center screen, you'll see we have uh, a map of all of the deployments for the past 10 years, so 2014 through 2024. Uh, it looks like we have the Six Rivers Complex fire lit up, which is in Northern California. Uh, Jason over here on our team led that mission. Uh, the bottom is a uh, mock-up of all of the Starlink satellites that are out there, the Starlink Constellation, which we're using more and more frequently uh, with our high-performance terminals uh, within the team. Uh, and the upper left corner, oh, it looks like somebody's clicked on something, but we typically would show all of the networks that we have deployed globally. Uh, we still do have networks uh, up for Hurricane Otis response down in Mexico. Uh, we have uh, networks down in Panama for refugee response uh, in the Darien Gap. Uh, and if you pan over to the equipment racks, and I'm not sure if you're able to get that, you'll see uh, on the left rack we have a full stack of Meraki equipment. There you go. It's a little easier that way. Oh, oh. <sighs> yep. So on the left, you'll see that we've got uh, a pair of uh, MS-355 switches with multi-gig support, uh, 802.3 BT, so a lot, of, a lot of power. We've got a pair of MX-105s and an HA configuration for firewalling, for application visibility and control, QoS, things of that nature. QoS is extremely important in an emergency response, by the way. When you start providing networking to people that don't have that, they really glom on. So you need to make sure that you have controls around bandwidth, uh, especially when your backhaul is limited. And finally, at the bottom, we have a pair of UCS C240 M5 short depth servers. Uh, we're using in a hyper uh, excuse me, hyper converged configuration. Uh, for edge workloads, network management, software, um, and, uh, and even for um, a network video recorder, and NVR. And then on the right, you'll see we've got uh, some Intel NUCs for workstations. We've got a variety of VHF and UHF radios uh, so that we can communicate with our public sector partners, right? And whenever we're working with public safety, uh, and then finally, at the bottom, a uh, radio interop device that allows us to bridge multiple radio networks together. All right, so I'll tell you a little bit about all the wireless equipment we've got. Uh, now, clearly, we've got VSAT solutions all over the place. We have a long history with wireless communication, uh, whether it's a BGAN, again, uh, a VSAT dish, a very small aperture terminal dish. Uh, here on the mast over here, you can see we've got a Starlink high performance unit all the way on the top. Uh, considerable amount of experience with LEO, low Earth orbit, and uh, geosynchronous satellite solutions. Um, a lot of exciting changes in that space. Uh, as far as access points, um, now we are in the process of uh, refreshing our kits, 
uh, to Wi-Fi 6 uh, solutions. Yes, forgive me, I realize that you know, there's 6E available, but uh, not always in the outdoor space, and we just got AFC uh, approved, right, for outdoor use. Um, so uh, what you see on this uh, demo, this right here, uh, is kind of an example of the Cisco Digital Divide CVD, right, combining uh, Meraki-based access Wi-Fi solutions, access layer Wi-Fi solutions with Cisco Unified, um, excuse me, Cisco ultra-reliable wireless backhaul-based uh, um, radios uh, to provide backhaul connectivity when we don't have access to um, landline, right, or a fiber type of a solution. Uh, so these are 9165Ds, and you can see we've got them kind of mocked up uh, so that this could be an, an endpoint terminal, yeah. right? Well, do you remember what that was? A <laughs> mesh end, right, I think is what, it's, what it stands for. Coming over to here, uh, this 9165D, right, with the directional antenna pointed at this NEMA enclosure, uh, and then this horn antenna pointed at our mast, right? You know, so we'll use this as an intermediary. This is an actual real kit that we use. We pack four 9165Ds in a kit uh, for either two point-to-point -point links uh, or you know, a multi-point setup or for us to use um, in a repeater fashion so that we can avoid an obstruction like a mountain or a building, right? things of that nature. Maybe go up to the top of a mountain peak or a water tower uh, when we're doing an emergency response and down again. Um, and then, of course, you'll see that we have a number of the uh, MR-based access points. So we've got MR76s here that we pair with omnidirectional and directional antennas, if you can pan to your left, Ian. Uh, we also are using some of the smaller, slimmer outdoor APs like the MR78 uh, as a Wi-Fi 6 access point. And these are just handy whenever we use them in a kit solution and we ship them out. People don't break the antennas off, right? So you have to consider the physical uh, the aspects of uh, some of these solutions. Now with uh, the uh, external antenna variants, we not only use Omnis, but we'll package a few directional panel antennas uh, for either extending client access or even allowing us to stretch a mesh out, right, if we have to do a mesh link. Um, inside of the nerve, we have uh, an MR57, an early Wi-Fi 6E uh, AP, and then we have an MR76 there on the mast that we're using as our root access point, right? I think that covers all uh, of the wireless. Um, and how long it takes you when you get to a uh, site to set all communications? Oh, right. Well, because the Nerve is a special type of truck, we've got a diesel engine, but we have a ton of lithium ion phosphate batteries inside of the shelter. We keep it charged all the time, right? So all Cisco campuses are 100% renewable power, and we keep the truck charged on an EV charger in either California or North Carolina at all times. So we're ready to go. Whenever this truck is called out and we need to roll onto a site or onto a scene, uh, we can be up in probably 10 minutes. Um, m really, most of the delay is the physical aspect of rolling a truck out, lowering the leveling jacks, ensuring that nobody is around, things of that nature, raising the pneumatic mast, right? Uh, but very quickly, right? It's really just a matter of flipping a switch. It's amazing. Expect nothing less. No, oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, one thing I'll say about the battery solution is that it allows us to use our generator less. We have a diesel generator. Uh, we have two diesel generators. Um, and when we have to use it, we use it at peak output, right? So we crank up the generator, run it for 10 hours flat out, right? The batteries are charged and we can run multiple days on battery alone. It's pretty amazing. That's awesome. It's really cool. Well, Eric, thank you so much for showing us this amazing truck. Certainly. No, no, absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to everybody that helps make this happen. We're a small team. Uh, we have to be very lean, very fast from an IT perspective. Got, got um, the night. But we are supported by uh, around 800 Cisco volunteers uh, that help us deploy globally. So thank, thank you, you to them. Thank you. And if you have an opportunity, take a look at the rest of the Purpose Pavilion. Thank you, everybody.